your calories go up. If your medium wheat chapati or fulka gives you 50 to 60 calories, these give you 140 to 150 calories. So it is not right that you should replace wheat with all these cereals. The idea is that you should be in moderation. It is seen anyone has to ask a question to a doctor. Eight out of 10 times, it is not concerning a prescription, but a doubt one may have in his or her own mind about a health issue or something you heard. Well, for all such doubts, all such queries, we are here at Dr. Saab, Hindi on Wednesdays and English on Fridays. Do subscribe and share our podcast to your contacts and friends. Hello, listeners. Welcome to the English version of Dr. Saab podcast. Today, the topic is diet in special circumstances. And with me is Preeti Desai here. Hello, sir. So, what is this diet in special circumstances? Preeti, as you would have known, in India, people are constantly either fasting or feasting. In our country, whether it is a death, ritual or it is somebody's birth or wedding or naming, there is always a feast. And then people who are supposed to follow a restricted diet forget everything. And the commonest is a wedding in the family where you have three to four days of enjoyment. So almost eight to ten meals where you forget what you are not supposed to eat. This is diet in special circumstances. Dear listeners, we at Dr. Saab sincerely hope that you are benefiting from our podcasts, the tips that we are giving you. And let me tell you that although our English episodes have begun just a month back, we have been having Hindi Dr. Saab podcast for over six months. If you have friends, relatives who would like to listen to our podcast in Hindi, the link is available in the description. Kindly listen to it and share our podcast with your friends and family. Thank you. So, sir, in these situations, how do we plan a diet? First thing is, we should remember that we are not paupers. We are not eating just because we are getting to eat good food. All of us can afford good food. It's that our health or our overweight requires us to control some amount of intake, deep fried, lot of oil, lot of sweets or no sweets. So we have to never forget that we are supposed to restrict certain intake. And you know, people kind of get carried away. I am taking very little. I take sometimes. I take once in a blue moon. Now tell me which dictionary defines little, very little, very, very little? Nothing. If I want to eat six modaks or six pedas, then four will be little, two will be very little. But that is still, I am not supposed to do. So we should never forget. And then maybe if you are going to have a party in the family or a wedding in the family where for four to six days you are going to be having all wrong foods, better to have a chat with your doctor to understand what you should eat and what you should not eat. Sir, there is a lot of talk going on. Like we should replace wheat rotis with uh, jawar, bajra, nachni. Is this right that we totally eliminate uh, wheat from our diet? No. As I have been talking and I will again reiterate that what matters is the calories you consume. A wheat chapati or a wheat fulka is thin and you can make it purely without oil or ghee on it. Whereas when you make rotis out of other cereals like jowar, bajra or nachni or ragi, then these cannot be as thin as wheat rotis. They tend to be almost two to three times in size. And then they definitely require some amount of oil or ghee to cook them. So then a per chapati of jowar, bajra, nachni, your calories go up. 
if your medium wheat chapati or fulka gives you 50 to 60 calories these give you 140 to 150 calories so it is not right that you should replace wheat with all these cereals the idea is that you should be in moderation you cannot take four chapatis for breakfast six for lunch six for dinner you have to have moderation in everything so what about deep fried puris should we have them or we shouldn't I think puris, if you are taking no, and it is a must kind of a prasadam, then take one small puri and finish your meal with chapatis. Gorging on puris and bhajiyas is not right because puris are never alone. You normally have bhajiyas or pakodas with that, and then you have fried papad. So your oil consumption goes for a toss. And then if you are taking one meal, Make sure your other meals are absolutely baked or grilled without any oil. So your daily consumption of oil of three spoons is not crossed. So now a major question arises for everyone. Rice. Should we eliminate it from our diet or should we have it? Again, Preeti, as I have said that our diet should be in moderation. So what I would say that people who are watching their diet, this applies more to them. One is you should have good quantity of salad in each meal. You should have good amount of vegetables or meat, fish and chicken. And then maybe one or two small chapatis and two tablespoons of cooked rice. Each meal is permitted. Don't take a mountain of rice with uh, gravies and all. That is not permitted. Rice in moderation is safe. It does not add to weight gain. Sir, and uh, what about sweets? So, is it okay to consume sweets if they are uh, taken in right proportions? Again, it matters from person to person. If you are a diabetic and your sugars are absolutely out of control, fasting 200, post lunch 400, then I would say stay away from sweets. If your sugars are well controlled and you are taking care in that meal not to have any deep fried item, then you may take one sweet at the most a small piece. But be sure to check if possible your post lunch blood sugar that day. That will tell you that one small cup of ice cream, how much sugar it can raise. So people who have uncontrolled diabetes, people who are into serious weight watching should not have sweets. People who are very well controlled and if they are looking at their diet and not consuming too many calories in the diet may have a small sweet once upon a time. Then again, I must tell you this, there are a lot of artificial sweetness nowadays, mainly stevia and splenda, which you can use to make desserts, you can use to make Indian desserts, you can use to make cakes, pastries. So maybe make an effort and good caterers nowadays also provide one sugar-free dessert in their thing. So mainly you have to control your impulses and not just because it's available, I must taste all 15 desserts and all. So as you told about artificial sweeteners, so, so, are these sweeteners uh, harmful or useful to us? So, do they help us in keeping a weight gain away? See, I have been always talking last 6-8 months that when it comes to diet, moderation is the key. 3 to 4 units of artificial sweeteners are permitted by diabetics or even people who are overweight. Not more than that. They can be consumed either by adding into milk, lassi, tea, coffee or by making sweets. So the latest ones which are considered safe are aspartam, stevia and splenda. The myths that they cause cancer and all is wrong. 3 to 4 units are even approved by FDA USA. So they are safe but again the question comes is moderation, moderation, moderation. So now uh, many festivals are coming, Navratri is there, then Dashera, then Diwali. So many people are going to observe fasts, many are going to have a feast. 
So help us know that having one meal during fast, is it sufficient to keep ourselves energized or do we need to do anything else? Yes. First rule is, I'm talking of rule, a diabetic should never fast. A diabetic, even most religions advocate that a diabetic should not fast even if it is religiously recommended that fasting should be done. Then a diabetic should eat three to four square meals a day. People who are watching weight, who don't want to put on weight, you know, fasting is a ritual in our country. The person who's fasting generally needs the usual 1500 to 2000 calories in the day. So all the fasting foods are generally high calorie. Like, you know, sabudana or sego, potato, fried. Nobody takes uh, baked potatoes or grilled potatoes or gravy potatoes. They take fried potatoes or chips. All these are high calorie. So they have to be consumed in moderation. Fruits are permitted in most fasts. Take that. Take a lot of milk and milk products. And your one meal a day should not compensate for your entire day's calorie content because that is, you know, you are loading your system. So maybe have two fruits in a day if you are fasting and that one meal should be again of a balanced diet like one meal of another day when you are taking two to three meals actually. So now as we are told, deep fried food is not good for our health. So is this true? See, I'll t take this question in another way. Your, for an adult, for a healthy adult, daily oil consumption permitted is three teaspoons, of which we recommend one teaspoon to be pure ghee and two teaspoons to be any refined oil. If your monthly consumption is X, suppose you are four people in the family, four adult, that comes to two liters. You want to use this quota of yours in deep fried food? Yes, be my guest. But that doesn't mean that your consumption monthly goes up to 4 liters. So again, I said balanced, moderation. So normally when we allow people deep fried food for people who are on diet, we say deep fried once a week. So you have to follow that way. And then I would also add here that for people who are non-diabetic, who are watching weight, deep fried once a week, sweets once a week, not on the same day. So, so is this applicable for baked food as well? Baked food, if you're talking of baked chicken, baked fish, you have to make sure that you're not putting too much butter on that. If you're talking of cakes, pastries, which are baked, you may use stevia or splenda, but are you putting a lot of butter in that? then you have to count that butter and that will increase the calories. You know, it's like people say, tandoori food is good. But then tandoori food, when it is made, no, lot of ghee is applied on that. Pasting is done. So the calorie of tandoori food goes up. It's how you are cooking makes the difference. Baking is good. Good way of cutting down calories. Good way of retaining nutrition. Baked vegetables, baked meats, very good. You can even bake red meat. But then you have to be sure that you're not putting too much butter into that. And again, now how much eggs you are putting in that, it depends on that. Sir, uh, there is a lot of uh, craze of tandoori foods among people. So is it good for the, our health? See, tandoori food actually is what is called grilled food. So if you are grilling without using a lot of fat, then it is very healthy. Just make sure you are not consuming the burnt out part of the food. Otherwise, you know, there are people who marinate a chicken or fish for more than 12 to 24 hours and then grill it. That doesn't require any much oil. So you have to take care of the oil in that. Otherwise, tandoori is a very healthy option if you are sure about how much oil or butter or ghee you are using in that. I think, Preeti, most of your questions must be over. Yes, sir.
and this will help people look after their health in the forthcoming festival season one request to all my diabetic friends or if you have a diabetic in your family no fasting for diabetics god understands thank you more next week so friends follow us on our podcasts to get information about future episodes and circulate among your friends also come back to us if you have a query about anything that we have covered or we have not covered so far thank you